first we will look into the texture itself, and then after I will uh, talk about how the, actually the twinning scheme is uh, operating in, in this code. And in general, how do we allocate a volume fraction to twinning? You know, that the simple calculation. Uh, now, uh, the simulation done, you examine then, uh, you know, this, this file in which, in which there is the, I closed it, the activity of, of uh, different twinning and slip systems and a number of reorientations. Actually, one line here for each increment contains the essential information what we want to, to see in terms of activity of slip and twinning. So uh, the first number is how many slip systems in average active in our modeling, in a grain. It's very low uh, using uh, uh, this low value of uh, alpha value, you know, in the interaction equation, but it is needed. Um, and um, the twin volume fraction here is uh, calculated uh, by a formula which I'm going to show you later. But uh, the, those twins are not created. So only the volume, which is would be twin, is calculated. But, but the twin is not there. And then the next number is how many grains were switched into a twin position. You know that this so-called PTR scheme, a predominant twinning reorientation scheme, is switching a mother grain into a one single variant, totally twin position. Uh, so this is not yet done in, at, in the first step. And then there are the, 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 the five different uh, strain modes we have. So the two, three slip systems we have. We have the basal, most active. We have the uh, prismatic and then the pyramidal. So the basal is very active. And then the, this number belongs to the tensile twins. The last one is the compression twins. It's in the same order as in your input file, always. Input file of the control file, you know, the sc.ctl. Um, we have to go for a much higher uh, number of, you know, at least a couple of number of steps to see, like here, num number five, step number five, uh, we have uh, 2.88, even less than three number of slip systems operating, 17% volume fraction of twins, and there is already uh, 561 um, grains, uh, which is in, in only in this step, in this step, they were switched into twin. We have 6,000. So out of 6,000, only in this step, 561 switched into twin position. It's enormous activity in twinning. Uh, and we can see that basal is still very active, uh, prismatic uh, and pyramidal is low, and, and no uh, compression twin. And we, at the very end, we can see what will be the situation. 3.35 average number of slip systems, 17.7 volume fraction uh, of twin. I think this is not calculating those which were t already switched into twin position. Um, in this increment, that much uh, many grains were switched into twin. The code, uh, I believe, the code, uh, I'm not using this version of twinning, you know. So uh, perhaps I do not know exactly the precise details, but I can uh, find out from the code itself. Um, is that uh, sec uh, new twinning, 
Can it happen? Probably yes, because uh, there is a reorientation of the grain fully into twin, but then it is uh, further deformed. And then, uh, in the same way, new twinning can happen in it, and then again a replacement the later stage. So the twinning activity in this way can go so high that it finally can be even more than 100%. You know, like, uh, like in uh, recrystallization, if you count um, how much volume is recrystallizing the total deformation in dynamic, you can find out it's more than 100%. It's normal. Uh, in this way, the twinning can be also more than 100% in this scheme. Uh, now, looking into the texture, we just uh, open the ATEX uh, software, open the orientation list, we go to temp SNT, but now it is hexagonal, so in the very beginning we have to take care that we impose the hexagonal texture analysis. It requires here to say that this, uh, the crystal symmetry is hexagonal, six-fold uh, symmetry. And then it is asking A, B, and C uh, parameters. These are the, you know, the unit la lattice uh, uh, length, uh, A, B, is, is in the, um, and it is converted into, in, into uh, rectangular coordinates. And the C value is 1.62, 1.624 for magnesium. You have to specify here. And then this is it. You see the uh, crystal system is 90, 90, That's a Miller-Brave um, um, system. We create the file, and we are going to look into now textures which are for hexagonal material. All figure, here we go. Um, very interesting. Uh, you see that now there are four indices appearing, like this is one, zero, dot, zero. On the place of the dot, there is an index, the third index. And the uh, sum of the first three indices equal to zero. So it is one, zero, minus one, zero. Uh, here this is 0 0.002, and so on, all figure. They also look uh, like, uh, you know, here circular, because we had an initial uh, texture which was uh, having this fiber texture, and the deformation mode is also axisymmetric. So, then it is expected that it's going to be the texture axisymmetric. Uh, easier to, to study it in, uh, because it's axisymmetric in the inverse pole figure here. You know, this, it shows the distribution of the central axis. X is a homogeneous, Y is homogeneous in the crystal system, uh, while uh, the Z axis has three three uh, fibers, three different fibers. There is this one, uh, and this one, and then here, and even the fourth one, which is, uh, which is the um, C-axis fiber. There is some, some maximum here. This is the strongest one, uh, strongest uh, component. I, actually, I don't know uh, how to one could uh, identify it if you put the wolf net, you know, and uh, you can you can find what is the indices of this orientation. Uh, <coughs> yes, but it doesn't matter. The orientation distribution can be similar. Yeah. Doesn't matter. We, we were doing the right. Uh, the simulation, uh, it was uh, only the orientation distribution the same of the, of the initial grains, you know. There was no any specific uh, 
The crystallography was imposed in the simulation. In the SCCTL file, we put all you know the hexagonal. It is not a cubic material now. Uh, it is. It is a. But you could have chosen any any other kind of initial texture. But this was a, well one choice because it is there. It is just an exercise. In the real life, of course, you have to measure uh, before uh, compression of of your magnesium bar. You measure the texture and then. You discretize and then use that set of grains in your simulation code. This one we didn't do in here, but obviously it has to be done. But the simulation is valid. I, I think that probably the twinning made uh, uh, some business here so that the appearance of the, the, the strength of different components is influenced by the twinning. Uh, but the twinning itself uh, uh, usually does not make new stable orientation. It can change the texture uh, dramatically uh, if the activity is very high, but uh, stable new components because of twinning that take place will not be created in the, in the, in the simulation. This is a uh, very simple reasons, mechanics reasons. Now, uh, what I would like to present to you is here uh, how the twinning volume fractions actually are calculated in the code. This is very important to, uh, to discuss. So, I make some. Uh, uh, drawing. To understand that. So we take a grain and deform. Okay, so we apply elastic deformation on it. It changes its uh, shape, changes orientation, and so on. And if twinning uh, is uh, happening, then uh, let's say uh, deformation twins are usually uh, like in magnesium, the, these are like platelets. So one part, one volume is twin. And it's um, uh, usually uh, with, with straight boundaries, more or less. And it can, can be, of, of course, a little bit different. There can be several variants which, which appear. Yeah. Twinning. Now, how to calculate the volume fraction? Uh, you know that the um, activity of, uh, of, of, of slip, if we try to um, um, associate twinning to, is like a slip process. Uh, because in slip, there is also shear strain. You know, this, this is the uh, uh, gamma dot, which is a given slip system. But we calculate the rate of slip. It's shear. Uh, when a dislocation is moving, it's actually making an elementary shear on the material. Uh, in a very localized, small, thin, thin layer, uh, one can say that when it was transformed into a new uh, by shear. Um, now, the similarly to to the twinning, when the twinning is happening, then this is this is the situation. If I'm taking a more geometrical case, that this is the shape of the crystal, and here is the uh, the, uh, the part which is going to twin, then this is what's happening. That locally in this volume. This is twin, and this part shifts here. This is shifting here. So the shape of the sample of, of my crystal will be like that. You see, like that. Now, uh, 
here there is a given shear value, which is the gamma twin, twinning shear. You know, this distance divided by that one is the shear, shear value. Yeah, the thickness, and then this spacement divided by thickness, this is the shear value. Um, so the volume, gamma, gamma twinning is, is, a, is a final value, let's say 0 0.70 set for um, FCC um, twin systems. It's, the value is really like this, like here. This is the real, more or less, situation. Now, um, the deformation of, uh, of the whole grain, if it is only made by twinning, then this, what should happen is that, uh, you know, that it will be like that. That's after deformation. You see then, uh, if you, I apply, if only twinning happening, I will need this much of shear strain. And then the whole grain switches into twin. So if I have that much am amount of shear strain, and only uh, twinning is happening, then 100% twinning, okay? So the volume, uh, all the volume of the initial uh, orientation goes into the volume of the twin, 100% twinning volume. Now, if I have uh, not only twinning but also slip, that means that only part of the total deformation is going to be made by twinning and in a, in, in a different manner. It's like uh, I have my initial sample or grain, and the twinning is happening like locally. Like, you know, here there is going to be a small volume. Another is here. It's better to, to assume that it's quite homogeneously. Many the small twins are, are taking place. And uh, because it, there is in the rest, rest of the part, there is this location slip, then the total uh, strain uh, is not going to be, the shape change is not going to be that much. You know, it is going to be like less. You know. Uh, so that uh, finally, uh, the, the gamma, uh, which is reached, by contribution of twin will be less, you know, that's the uh, gamma twin in, in that case here will be less than 0 0.707. Let's say, I, I don't know, uh, the twinning shear total is like 0 0.05 or so. Uh, different values can happen. It's not what I want to mean. Uh, what I mean is that uh, uh, based on this uh, philosophy that uh, if uh, the, all the deformation is ba made by one twin, then uh, this much of shear leads to 100%. If there is le less total shear made by twin, then proportionally less volume will be made by twinning. So uh, we are using this equation, or not equation, but something like that here, and we say that the delta V divided by the volume of, uh, of the um, total volume of the grain for twinning, you know, this is the twinning volume, delta V twinning with respect to the, you know, the mother volume is simply will be equal uh, to the all the twinning made so if there are different variants. So the summation of, uh, of you know, gamma uh, variant one of twin, variant two, and then so on, if there is, let's say, six variants, 
is going to be total a certain shear value. If, it, if, if this total shear value is 0.07 and 100% unique, but in proportion, if it is less, so if you divide it with 0 0.707, which is the uh, value needed for 100% winning, then we have the formula here already. So one variant, one simple variant, okay, delta V uh, for one twinning variant is going to be the volume of the mother grain multiplied with the, the uh, strain gamma made by the twinning divided by the gamma required for total twinning. So this is simply in one increment we calculate the, uh, the gamma value which belongs to the twin shear. Is it clear? This, this is the uh, volume formula. We take the mother volume, we calculate how much shear belongs to that twin variant, how much it is uh, proportional to the uh, total twinning uh, shear strain ne necessary, and then we get uh, the volume. And then we allocate this volume to the twin. Now, how, we, how do we calculate this one? Yeah, how, much, how much is this one? But this is simply the, the uh, we consider the twinning as a slip. There is a great similarity. You know, the slip is also doing like here, but very locally. Uh, so the, the formula, what we have uh, for strain in general, is, uh, is the following, that, you know, we have um, epsilon, uh, one strain component of, of the... Uh, epsilon dot ij of the strain rate tensor is going to be uh, the summation of all the slips multiplied with the orientation matrices m i j s is an orientation matrix s is a slip system we have n number of slip systems multiplied with gamma dot s and that's the slip rate within, within the, uh, the grain. But we have also twinning, okay? So the, uh, this is for slip and for twinning from t equal 1 to you know, another n value and m i j twin times gamma dot t twin. So then uh, you see that uh, here this strain equation considers the twinning exactly the same way as it was a slip. So it has, uh, like the slip plane is a twinning plane. The slip direction is a twin direction. And, and like other slip systems, the twinning uh, system has a critical stress to, act, to be activated. So, uh, the, con uh, the constitutive equation for, for slip in general is, is this one, that a slip rate, uh, slip rate in a, in a slip system is gamma dot zero times, you know, tau uh, s and tau zero and exponent on uh, um, one over m. m is the strain rate sensitivity index. So what is, uh, this is how slip is controlled by viscoplastic uh, slip. This is what exactly the code is uh, using. Uh, we do the same for the twinning. What is the meaning uh, here? This is the resistance. Tau zero is the strength of, of the slip uh, system. Tau s is the actual stress on it. Tau zero is is the, is the reference, the strength. So usually tau s is less than tau zero. And the same thing is for twinning. So for twinning, you know, gamma dot t is going to be, we will have a, a reference constant here. We will have the uh, shear stress from the macroscopic stress state uh, projected 
on the twinning system. We divide with this tau zero value. We use the uh, constitutive equation with, you know, with viscoplastic slip, and we get gamma dot t. And then in a in a time increment, you know that the delta gamma t is going to be just gamma dot t times the time increment. We are doing incremental simulation. But the code is calculating always the rate uh, quantities. And that it knows how much time increment we imposed. And then just multiplying with the delta t, we get how much was the, the increase, uh, the contribution of twinning uh, to the deformation of the crystal. It's going to be a part. It's, uh, the twinning is not going to uh, produce all the deformation. There is always dislocation uh, slip needed to it. So this is the, the formula, actually, that, as, as I said, the volume of the twin is equal to the volume of the matrix multiplied with the gamma dot of the twinning What happened? I'm not writing anymore. I'll try, try to write by hand. Is it possible? Yeah, gamma dot mm. uh, times. No, not. I stopped working my stuff. Oh, no, it's working. Gamma dot times delta t. Yeah? Divided by, by gamma, uh, you know, the, the twin shear value is like the 0 0.707 or other value. So that's a part of this one, you know. It's always less. It cannot be higher. And then you will see the volume to transfer into the, uh, the volume of the twin. So it's a very simple formula, you know, what, what we used to do, to do in, the, in the code, to allocate volume fraction corresponding to twinning activity. This is the way. More or less, you get it? No, this is only the twin here. It, only the twin. There are, there are uh, gamma dot values for the slip, several slip systems. There are gamma dot values for the twin for different variants. So here, the different variants uh, get different volume fractions according to the activities of the contributions of these gamma dots to the total strain. A simple formula. It's also you find it in in, uh, in, in papers. Usually, pe people give a formula like this. It's okay. Yeah, I think we should be forced to to, to finish now here this uh, um, twinning uh, business. Um, of course. Uh, it would be nice to, to look into the old tuning uh, modeling uh, approach a little bit also. Uh, but uh, just uh, I, I will try to make a very short presentation for that. I will show you the input file. Then you will, uh, you will understand that perhaps also if there is output file, let me see. Uh, If hundred percent, then then it's completely replaced. <laughs> twinning shear is coming coming from the from the code. The the code is calculating uh, on the basis of uh, the slip and twinning systems, calculating what is the slip distribution in each slip system. It's solving. It. The code producing that. 
And we don't decide. No need. The court is deciding. Uh, so what I wanted to show you here. Mm. Yeah, is this one. An input file. Here it is. So for a all tuning variant modeling, the input file is different. Uh, here you see uh, this is 12,000 uh, mother grains are, are here. And in each mother grain, six tensile twin positions, tensile twin grains are created at the beginning of the simulation. The input file of the simulation is this one. So this uh, goes, then you will have 84,000 grain orientations for the simulation. The code is running with that one. And you see this is actually the uh, same kind of, this is the mother grain orientation. This is its volume, relative volume. There's a code that you know this is a zero, this mother grain. And then you see after six lines with zero volume fraction, okay? So these six uh, uh, grains, which have uh, initially zero volume, they are the twins. They are pre-created, so they are available. And then with the formula which I just showed, in one increment, we put here, there, and there, you know, according to the activities, we put small volumes in each increment. And it's accumulating. And at the end uh, of the simulation, we will have here the same file, but with volumes going from the mother grain here, partially into the twin. Perhaps there is even here a, a simulation done, and we can see it. Let me see, there's a, I need a temp SMP file. Uh, where is it? Temp one. I think this is here. The case, yeah. So this is uh, after uh, deformation. The polycrystal code was running, and according to the activities of the twinning systems, put volumes. Uh, this, this, uh, then the volume of the mother grain here decreased, but it's still the you see the biggest one. This is ten to the minus three, and this is another uh, first variant of tensile twin. Other variant, third one, there is six variants here. Yeah, here, this is the six, number six. And uh, they, there are volumes in it. This was zero initially. Now there are different volumes. And for and the second mother grain is here. Yeah, is this, no, it's here. This is a mother grain here. And then here are the volumes in it. Very, uh, very different volumes. So the activities are not at all uniform. Uh, usually there is a one or two which are very active. So although we call it all twinning variant, but actually not all twinning is usually active. In certain cases for specific orientations, it can happen, but it's not a general rule. And then this is the final texture, we just plot it. And then we see uh, the, the texture itself. Um, and uh, we also have you know, the total volume, the transferred volume from the mother grain to the twins here are calculated. And we have volume fractions of twinning and so on. Can be compared directly with experiment. This is the old twinning variant approach. There is no, 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 not even one twin is neglected. They are all there. 
and also they change orientation you know this twin is made it, it has like 10 to the minus 4 volume not uh, negligible to the 10 to the minus 3 you see it's about three times less volume but it's a grain and during plastic strain from its initial orientation it is changing its orientation according to slip like a real grain so then it follows uh, the, the this is the you know uh, most uh, natural physical approach to do tuning forget about the, the predominant tuning reorientation uh, uh, scheme uh, luckily carlos is not here so i can i can say that <laughs> uh, but carlos tomé you know it's one of uh, the, the most uh, respectable polycrystal plasticity simulation person uh, because the, the code that he, he was created with uh, uh, Ricardo Libenson, the Los Alamos DPSC code, is extremely performing. Uh, very good code. You can use uh, like, like the METS code, even faster. Uh, certain features it doesn't have. Uh, there are differences, but it's just because they were choosing it this way. It is compo composed of uh, components, subroutines, and if you are a good uh, programmer, you can add uh, new features to the code, and uh, then you can introduce new uh, things in it, and then uh, innovating in simulation. And that is called modeling. If you make new new things into the into the code. Okay, I I think uh, we are going to stop here. Yeah. Uh, we continue actually uh, at three o'clock this afternoon. Right, uh, cyclic, uh, you know, fatigue kind of uh, modeling possibilities. Right, this is the deal.